People are spending hundreds of dollars on red light devices because somebody on social media said that it helped them with everything. Red light therapy has become the latest wellness obsession, but most people diving in don't actually understand what it is and what it isn't. And that confusion, it's costing people time, money, and in some cases, real progress towards feeling better. My name is Dr. Vivian Chen. I'm an integrative doctor and somebody who deeply cares about evidence-based wellness. I'm here to bridge that gap between science and health practices that actually move the needle. Today, we're cutting through the noise and breaking down what red light therapy really does and what the science actually says. If you've been curious, overwhelmed, or just tired of hearing conflicting advice, this video will take you from skeptical to confident. I want you to be able to make informed choices that actually move the needle instead of wasting your money because you keep buying things you don't truly understand and falling for marketing gimmicks. Oh, and by the way, if you're looking for a professional quality red light device you can trust, you can get $260 off Loombox if you use the link I've posted in the description below. Now, let's talk about red light therapy. Is it just the latest wellness snake oil trend? I mean, how can one thing possibly help with fine lines, wrinkles, pain, muscle recovery, hair growth, wound healing, brain health, and more? It sounds too good to be true, right? Well, actually, there is solid science behind red light therapy. Over 2,000 published studies on photobiomodulation, which is the scientific technical term for red light therapy. And here's how it works. Red and near-infrared light are two wavelengths from the light spectrum that can penetrate through skin and reach deep into our tissues. And when they do, they give our cells a boost. How? Well, inside our cells are little powerhouses called mitochondria. And here's the cool part. These mitochondria actually have receptors for red and near-infrared light. So when they're exposed to these specific wavelengths of light, they kick into gear and produce more ATP, aka cellular energy. ATP is like the energy currency of our bodies. Everything in our bodies run on it. Walking, thinking, digesting, detoxifying, healing, Almost every process in our body uses and depends on ATP. And when our mitochondria slow down and ATP production drops, we start to feel it. Brain fog, fatigue, slow recovery, dull, saggy skin, even poor blood sugar control because the mitochondria is where the food that we eat turns into ATP, the energy our cells can use. In fact, many of the symptoms we chalk up to getting older can actually be traced back to declining mitochondrial function. Here's a wild fact. We lose about 8% of our mitochondrial function per decade. So by the time we're 50, we have lost almost 50% of the energy production potential of our cells. No wonder we start to get symptoms and feel a little bit slower. The good news? you can support your mitochondria, and I'll share how later. And here's one thing to be clear on. Red light therapy is not the same as heat therapy or infrared saunas. Saunas work by heating up your body and making you sweat. Red light therapy works at the cellular level to boost energy without significantly raising your core body temperature. In fact, some researchers suggest not using red light therapy inside saunas because heat may actually blunt the effects of red light therapy. So if you use a sauna and red light therapy, it's probably good to space these two modalities apart by a few hours. Now, which wavelengths should you be looking for if you want to get benefits? The two most studied and evidence-based wavelengths are 660 nanometers, which is red light, and 850 nanometers, which is near-infrared light. Red does not penetrate as deep. Generally, studies show that it can reach down to about two to five millimeters, so it's great for surface issues like skin and hair. Near-infrared penetrates deeper, reaching around five to 10 millimeters, with one study suggesting that it could even reach as deep as five centimeters. So it's great for things like joints and muscles. 
Now, if you're wondering if there are high quality studies on red light therapy in humans, the answer is yes. There are quite a lot, and I just wanna share three high quality and very interesting studies with you today. Let's look at this randomized placebo-controlled double-blinded split-phase trial. Now, that's a mouthful, but what that means is that this is scientifically a very robust study that looked at the effect of red light therapy on fine lines and wrinkles. In this study, 76 participants received either red light, near-infrared light, or a combo of both, or a sham fake light held about 10 centimeters from the face on just one side of their face twice a week. The other side of the face was left untreated, which acted as a built-in control, very important. After four weeks, the results were pretty striking. The real light treatments led up to a 36% reduction in wrinkles and a 19% boost in skin elasticity. And here's where it gets really interesting. They took skin biopsies and found more collagen and elastin fibers in the skin that received real red light. Which makes sense, right? Collagen is what keeps our skin plump and smooth, so boosting it likely explains the visible improvements in fine lines and wrinkles that they found in the study. Now, the incredible benefits of red light aren't just limited to the skin. It is an underrated tool to help with pain and inflammation. For example, in this study, 50 people with osteoarthritis applied red or near-infrared light to the knee for about 15 minutes twice a day for 10 days. A control group also used a fake light on the joints. They then assessed their pain scores and found that pain reduced by more than 50% for both the red and near-infrared groups, but no significant change was found in the pain score for those who used fake lights. Now, how about muscle health? You've probably seen professional athletes using red light therapy and for very good reason. By the way, you don't have to be an athlete to use it. It's helped me personally up-level my workouts and strength train. Strength training has significantly improved my body composition, my bone health, and even my mental health. In order for the light to do its magic though and penetrate through to the muscle, you need high irradiance, something like the loom box. In this double blind study, 10 male volleyball players received both red and neon red light immediately before exercise. The athletes were able to complete almost 13% more bicep contractions, plus they were able to exercise for longer, an 11.6% increase in endurance, in fact. What's even more interesting was that blood markers like lactate, creatine kinase, and C-reactive protein, which are markers of inflammation and muscle damage, dropped, indicating that there is less muscle burn, less damage, and lower inflammation post-exercise. What about the lesser known benefits of red light therapy like hair growth? Where does the research stand? Well, this randomized double blind study shown red LED light to one side of the head of 100 patients with androgenic alopecia, which is male or female pattern hair loss. They received a light for 30 minutes, three times a week. And over the course of 24 weeks, the side of the head that received the light had significantly greater hair coverage, hair thickness, and hair count than the untreated side. Now, one thing you will notice from the research is this. Red light therapy isn't a quick fix. It works by energizing your cells, and over time, that cellular boost translates into results you can see and feel. But it does take consistency, and everybody responds differently. For example, in many skin studies, Visible changes didn't show up until the four to eight week mark. And in studies on joint pain, improvements often took one to four weeks. Which brings me to one of the most important factors in whether or not red light therapy actually works, the quality of the device. Why does that matter? Because to get results, you need the right dose of light. And the right dose can only come from a high quality device. That's why having a high irradiance third-party tested device like Loombox is so important. You know exactly what you're getting and it's been called the Swiss army knife of red light devices for a good reason because most people who have it 
use it for so many different things. Because when you start with a high irradiance, powerful device, all you have to do is adjust the distance to get the right dose for the part of the body you're treating. Most of those face masks deliver a low irradiance, around 10 to 30 milliwatts per centimeter square. That's actually a good dose for treating facial skin, but it won't go deep enough to help your joints, muscles, or your hair. So no, your face mask isn't going to help your knee pain or grow your hair. It's a one trick pony. It only works on your face. And that's if you invest in a high quality mask. There's so many poor quality masks out there. If you actually want a device that can support your face, joints, muscles, and even wounds, you need something like Loombox that delivers the power needed for deeper tissue. And if I'm treating my face, all I have to do is move it further away to get that gentler dose of around 25 milliwatts per centimeter square, which is perfect for skin. And this distance and the irradiance was third party tested in a lab. Doing your research and really getting educated can save you a ton of money and prevent you from buying multiple things that just don't work. That brings me to mistake number two, that any red light will work. Just grab a red bulb. I've even seen videos of people using the checkout scanners as a red light wand for their face, but sorry, this is just not going to work. Red light therapy uses specific wavelengths like 660 nanometers and 850 nanometers that are backed by studies. Most light bulbs are merely tinted red, so you don't know what wavelengths of light they're emitting. And even if they say they emit the infrared or red wavelengths, the light from a bulb scatters in all directions, which means that by the time it reaches your body, the irradiance is extremely weak. They're great for setting a relaxing mood in your room, but they won't help you achieve the skin, joint and recovery benefits you're after. They don't even come close in terms of penetration or results compared to a device like Loombox, which has been third party tested for both wavelength and irradiance. The last myth I want to bust is infrared sauna is not the same as red light therapy. Infrared sauna usually use far or mid infrared light to penetrate the body and heat up the core body temperature with the purpose of heating up the body and inducing a sweat. This has its own benefits, but the wavelengths are different and they will not give you the same skin rejuvenation, wound healing, and targeted pain relief that you would get from a red light device. Now, if you want to learn more and avoid common mistakes people are making, there is a link in the caption to download our free guide. So who is red light therapy for? Well, athletes use it to speed up recovery and ease sore muscles. Biohackers love it for boosting mitochondria. Beauty influencers swear by it for getting that glow before going on camera. But here's the thing. It's not just for elite performers or wellness fanatics. Everyone can benefit. In a world where our cells, and especially our mitochondria, are constantly under pressure from stress, poor sleep, ultra-processed food, blue light, environmental toxins, red light therapy is like a daily recharge. It is my number one non-negotiable. It gives your cells the energy they need to function better. And when your cells work better, you feel better. Busy professionals use it to manage aches, unwind from long days, maintain radiant skin. Parents use it to soothe tension, support sleep and boost recovery from workouts or just life. Even grandparents love it. They use it to ease joint stiffness or improve wound healing and so many things. If you're somebody who wants more consistent energy, healthy mood, clearer skin, less aches and pains, or just want to feel more like yourself again, red light therapy can help. It certainly has for me. So what actually makes a red light device worth your money? Here's what I look for in a red light device. Number one, the right wavelengths. The most studied and effective wavelengths are 660 nanometers, which is red, great for targeting skin, 850 nanometers near infrared light penetrates deeper into muscles and joints and it's great for deeper tissue. You ideally want both from each of the bulbs. Each of the bulbs should be emitting both wavelengths. 
Number two, you want high irradiance, which has been verified by a third party lab. This is a big one. You want a device that will work. That means high irradiance up close for the deeper benefits, so it penetrates, or you can pull it away to lower that dose and irradiance for skin benefits. Number three, you want to look for safety testing. Red light therapy is generally safe, but I want to look for devices that have been tested to international medical standards. The most important one is IEC 60601, which is a safety standard for medical devices. Most devices on the market have not even been tested to the standard. If a device meets IEC 60601 standards, it means it's been tested to be safe and high quality for wellness use. I also look for other IEC standards, which I'm gonna put on the screen here, which test for things like EMF and optical safety. Loombox meets all of these standards. And not only that, it's portable, extremely versatile, and you will find yourself reaching for it multiple times a day for different things like your skin, workouts, soreness, aches, and that little boost. Right now, you can use code 23LBYT, that's 23LBYT, to save $260 off my most used wellness device. Now that you understand what red light therapy can do and some of the common pitfalls and what to look for in a device that will work, hopefully you won't be guessing anymore or feeling confused or hopping from one trendy gadget to the next.